All right, everyone. Good evening. This is Justin Williams, the voice. So I've just been uh, chilling around my place this evening, um, coming up with different ideas for some videos that I would like to do, just different likes and interests of mine. Um, kicking it here. Had a lot of art stuff going on, some music stuff I've shown you guys, some of the stuff I got going on in that area. Making some shirts. I've been painting a lot of like clothes. I don't know what's up with that, but just something to do, I guess. Um, so this is a book called A Primer of Drug Action. I used to use it in my old workplace, actually. Um, and uh, KDAC um, gave it to me. Uh, it was interesting, and uh, there's a lot of good information here. So it's a concise, non-technical guide to action, uses, and side effects and of psychoactive drugs. So I'm all about it. And uh, I've got a dual-degreed person here, a medical doctor and a philosophy doctorate holder. So we know this person's probably a researcher. I don't really know much about this author. Robert M. Julian, MD, PhD, is staff. Anti antithesiologist at St. Vincent Hospital and Medical Center in Portland, Oregon, a physician and a pharmacologist. Dr. Julian is the author of many articles and reviews as well as Drugs and the Body, 1988. So another good book if you want to study um, about drugs in general and also um, in particular psychoactives, you can read a book called Uppers, Downers, and All Arounders. And that's another author that's visited this area here as well. Several friends of mine have made mention about, you know, um, book signings by that author and meeting them at community colleges and a university here locally. Um, so psychopharmacology has been a big interest of mine. It's what I went to school for um, after um, studying um, mental health general, behavioral health, behavioral analysis, and several other fields in the mental health arena while working in mental health and continue to pursue more education to become a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner dash BC or board certified. Um, I do have a little bit more work to do in that area if I would want to still pursue that. I've taken a huge hiatus. Many of you know um, some things I experienced in my personal life were a part of that. Um, and also some ethical and philosophical conflicts I have with that. But let's look into, let's get into the drug research here. It's a concise, non-technical guide to the action, uses, and side effects of psychoactive drugs. I really want to look at um, marijuana in general, studies of THC on the brain, um, take a look at um, some probably psychedelics also would be good, look at some psilocybin mushrooms and other things. Um, now that I'm not studying this in an academic setting, I'm free to research it however I'd like. I'm also interested in psychopharmacology and drug interactions with... Um, the brain and how they can be used to help things like this right here, a drug treatment for obesity and ADHD, drug therapy for children, adolescents and the elderly, drug receptor interactions and their clinical implications, drug therapy for depression, anxiety disorders, bipolar disorders, schizophrenia and nicotine dependence, practice guides for treating psychological illness, drug treatment for obesity and ADHD, inhalants and abuse of anabolic steroids, treatment of affective disorders using drugs and psychological therapy. For over 20 years, Robert Julian's A Primer of Drug Action has been a definite guide to the effects of psychoactive drugs on the brain and on behavior. Now in its eighth edition, this popular guide continues to offer a clear and objective look at the wide variety of drugs, including antidepressants, alcohol, marijuana, steroid hallucinogens, uh, antipsychotic drugs and many others. Thoroughly revised and updated with over half of its references dated from 1995 to 1997, a new edition of the Primer Drug Action is most current book on drugs available today. It includes important new information, and then I already listed all that off. I also have many technical guides that kind of go complementary to the DSM-4 and the DSM-5. I think D the, what was the other dsm 4 dash TR was that the one, and also in alignment with the ICD-10, ICD-11 now, I think. Um, I've been out of the loop for a bit, haven't been working in the field proper, um, so, but I am going to try to do a series probably on drugs is what I'm thinking, um, 
getting back into effect, like um, studying it um, and its effects upon the human brain. There's some interesting things I have in here somewhere. I saw some cliff notes I had from school if they're still in here. Gosh, I had like a really good one on benzodiazepine withdrawal that I used to use for work all the time when I was working with patients in crisis. So yeah, here's this one right here. This is good, man. This thing, Xerox didn't give it to someone who's studying these topics because this was just a handy reference thing to um, for myself and my colleagues to refer to. Benzo withdrawal symptoms, jumpiness, restlessness, insomnia, nightmares, sleep disturbances, increased anxiety, panic attacks, agoraphobia, social phobia, perceptual dis distortions, intrusive memories, depersonalization, derealization, hallucinations, misperceptions. I wrote visual and audio hallucinations. That's like my handwriting there I added to this. Depression, obsessions, paranoid thoughts, rage, aggression, irritability, poor memory and concentration, craving, headaches, Pain, stiffness, tingling, numbness, weakness, fatigue, flu-like symptoms, muscle twitches, tremors, dizziness, blurred vision, dried eyes, tinnitus, hypersensitivity, light, sound, touch, taste, smell, gastrointestinal symptoms, constipation, pain, distension, appetite, weight change, dry mouth, metallic taste, unusual... What does that say? An, a unusual smell, unusual smell, sweating, palpitations, over-breathing, urinary difficulties, menstrual difficulties, fits. It's a real nasty thing to deal with, man. I've dealt with people demanding benzos from me before in the past when I was handing out medications and pissing themselves and just total nervousness, to be honest. But So, preface, principles of drug addiction... Pharmacokinetics, how drugs move through the body, drug absorption, drug distribution, termination of drug action, time course of drug distribution and elimination, drug tolerance and dependence. So, pharmacodynamics, drug receptor in interactions, drug receptor affinity, dose response relationship, drug safety and effectiveness, veritability and drug responsiveness, drug interactions, drug toxicity, placebo effects, central nervous system depressants, traditional sedative, hypnotic drugs, and anti-epileptic drugs, general concepts, historical background, sites and mecha mechanisms of action, uses, specific CNS depressants, Barbiturates, miscellaneous, non-barbiturates, sedative hypnotic drugs, general anesthetics, anti-epileptic drugs, including those used to treat psychological disorders, relationship between structure and activity, barbiturates, hyd no wait, what is this one? Hydanotoins, hyd benzodiazepines, carmazepine, velforic acid, anti-epileptic drugs in pregnancy. It's been a while since I looked at all this stuff. Central nervous system, depressants, alcohol, and inhalants of abuse, drug treatment, and anxiety disorders, benzodiazepines, and second generation axiolytics, psychostimulants, cocaine, and amphetamines. That would be interesting to look at. Cocaine, chemistry, psychokinetics, pharma, Codynamics, side effects of short term, low dose use, toxic and psychotic episodes of long term, high dose use, fetal effects, treatment of cocaine abuse, amphetamines and related drugs, mechanisms of action, pharmacological effects, dependence, tolerance, ICE, a free base form of methamphetamine, therapeutic uses of amphetamines and related stimulants, psychostimulants, caffeine and nicotine, that would be good for all of us to consider. Um, Nicotine, antidepressant drugs for decades of continuing progress, pharmacotherapy for bipolar disorder, anti-manic drugs, anti-psychotic drugs, conventional and new generational agents, opioid, analgesics, marijuana, a unique sedative, euphoric psychedelic drug. We should take a peek at that one, guys. History, mechanisms of action, the cannabinoid receptor, 
pharmacokinetics, pharmacological effects in animals, pharmacological effects in humans, side effects, tolerance and dependence, therapeutic uses, marijuana and public safety, psychedelic drugs, masculine, LSD, Fencidoline and other hallucinogens, something I definitely want to look at, just definitely an interest there. Anabolic, androgenic, steroids, drugs and society, priorities and alternatives, integration of drugs and psychopharmacological therapies and treating mental and behavioral disorders. Appendix, pharmacological regulation of female fertility, oral contraceptives and related drugs, non-opioid anagulcy. Analgesics, uh, pharmacological treatment, and Parkinsonism. The brain, neurons, synaptic transmission, and drug action. So, yeah, it's kind of dry, like me reading this. My pronunciation sometimes I don't get correct, but I'm not really apologizing for myself. I mostly read to myself, really. So, if I haven't heard it mentioned in class or um, for a while, I don't really know. The thing to really know about um, pharmacology. Pharm pharmacology and psychopharmacology is that it's constantly changing and it's a deep well and there's like some new drug introduced just like all the time um, so that's the gist of this book I'm gonna look at it more in depth probably this is always great stuff to take a look at if you're just like a real nerd like me and here there's some very interesting charts in here I'll try to show you guys turn this sideways but really the main purpose of this video Tonight, taking a look at this book, A Primer of Drug Action, Robert M. Julian, MD, and PhD. And to push this algorithm through and keep it going, guys, I want to keep on providing content, so I'm just going to try to steadily release some videos, ones of my likes, interests, pop culture, maybe do some more on um, different personality disorders or um, different topics in psychiatry, mental health, behavioral health, um, psychology. I'd like to touch back into some books that I'm interested in. Right now I'm reading more contemporary stuff. I've shown you guys this several times. Just taking a look at things that are more um, with like my contemporary interests. But eventually I'd like to get back into some more theology and philosophy and some of the classics, particularly Greek and Latin, as you may know. When I started out my studies, I did not intend to end up working in psychiatry or mental health, but my intention was to work um, as an academic, um, to teach at university, and um, my main interests are religion, philosophy, theology, um, but it all ties in with like linguistics and anthropology too, right? Sociology somewhat. Um, there's a lot of overlap, especially when you have a focus like mine was as an undergrad and some posts back in literature. And then I got more interested in medicine and behavioral health and other things tied into just kind of falling into work in that field. And um, here we are. So a big part of working in mental health, even if you have a very um, entry-level job, say you're like a mental health tech or a QMHA, which I was for many years, a qualified mental health associate or a qualified mental health professional, um, if you're not a psychiatric provider per se, but um, you are a mental health provider, then um, it's good to familiarize yourselves because mental health techs often um, can also be med techs and administer medications via the help of like an RN, um, which the prescribers would prescribe these. So a psychiatric mental health nurse pac practitioner dash BC or a psychiatrist would prescribe um, said drugs that are mental health um, related drugs and then as a med tech you could end up distributing those drugs and working with the nursing staff to make sure your Mars and whatnot are in order and to have a good understanding of the effects of these drugs upon the human person is probably going to work to your benefit so I'm Justin William Savoy I'm signing off for tonight if you ever want to get a hold of me you can reach me at SavoyJustin123 at gmail.com that's S-U-V-O-Y J-U-S-T-I-N at gmail.com. All right, guys. Peace.